Yeah, I welcome you for uh, the series of lecture on uh, metrology. Now, uh, we will start uh, module number 6 on screw thread metrology. In this uh, module, we will be discussing about uh, the uh, general introduction to screw threads uh, covering uh, the uh, thread making uh, processes and how they are classified and what are the various uh, applications of screw thread uh, those things we will be studying. And then uh, we will also discuss about uh, the various uh, screw thread uh, terminology and then we will move on to the measurement of uh, screw thread uh, elements. In this uh, lecture one, uh, we will be covering uh, the general introduction to screw threads we will cover uh, general applications of screw threads and classification of uh, screw threads, thread cutting methods and how they are uh, designated. Then we will uh, study the screw thread uh, terminologies, various uh, terms used uh, uh, related to screw threads and then uh, we will discuss about uh, screw thread uh, uh, measurement that is uh, major diameter measurement, minor uh, diameter measurement thread angle measurement, pitch measurement and effective uh, diameter measurement. Now, uh, briefly uh, we will try to understand uh, the uh, general aspects of uh, screw threads. Uh, these are uh, the most uh, important uh, machine elements and are used uh, uh, in uh, screws, bolts, nuts, studs, tapped uh, holes and other uh, power transmitting uh, devices. Uh, they are very convenient uh, uh, for joining and uh, sealing uh, purposes. They are used as coarse uh, type for bracket uh, fitments and uh, as very fine uh, type of type for uh, micrometer heads and uh, for precision uh, uh, moving uh, mechanisms. It is basically a helical uh, ridge produced uh, by forming uh, a continuous helical groove of uh, uniform cross section on an external or internal surface of uh, a cylinder or uh, a cone. Now, you can uh, in this pic for photo we can see the helical uh, ridge produced and the cross section is uh, uniform for all the threads. Now, a screw thread formed on a cylinder is known as a straight or a parallel uh, screw thread, while the one formed on a cone is known as a tapered uh, thread. You can see here some uh, uh, tapered threads here, this is external uh, tapered thread and this is internal uh, tapered uh, thread. Now, what are the general applications of uh, screw threads? Uh, they are, uh, used for uh, fastening purpose, screws, nut and bolts and studs are used for temporarily fixing uh, one part onto the other uh, part and they are used for uh, joining coaxial uh, uh, joining of rods, tubes etcetera by external and internal uh, screws. And they are also used for uh, clamping and they strongly to strongly hold an object by a threaded rod as in C clamps, vices, tile stock on lathe bed. They are used for controlled linear movement that is for travel of slides and movement of work tables in milling machine, shaping machine, CNC machine tools etcetera. And these screw threads they are uh, used for transmission of motion and uh, power. For example, uh, lead screw used in a lathe is used for uh, transmitting uh, motion and power and they are also used for converting rotary motion to 
translation that is a rotation of the screw causing linear travel of the nut which have wide use in the machine tool uh, kinematic systems. Uh, screw threads are used for position control in instruments, screws uh, enabling precision movement of the work table in uh, microscopes are examples and uh, screw threads are used uh, in precision movement of uh, uh, precision measurement of length that is uh, the threaded uh, spindle of micrometer is an example for this. Now, to get uh, the very slow rotation uh, we can uh, use uh, uh, the screw threads in the form of uh, 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 as in the example of gear and uh, worm wheel and to exert uh, heavy force uh, the screw threads are used example is mechanical uh, presses. Uh, the screw threads are also used uh, in conveying and uh, squeezing uh, materials in uh, screw conveyors, injection molding machines and uh, screw pumps and uh, in controlled uh, automatic feeding in mass production assembly the screw threads are uh, used. Now, let us study how these uh, screw threads are uh, classified. Uh, they are classified uh, according to the location that means that is whether the screw threads are uh, made on the external surface as in uh, bolts or uh, whether they are made on uh, internal surface uh, for example, uh, nuts. These uh, threads uh, uh, can also be classified according to the configuration that is whether they are uh, straight uh, helical uh, for example, bolts and uh, studs, a uh, tapered uh, helical as in uh, drill check, also radial on scroll as in the self uh, centering uh, check. Uh, screw threads can also be classified according to the direction of uh, helix uh, that is whether they are right handed or uh, left handed. According to the form they are classified uh, as uh, uh, V threads uh, normally 60 degree and uh, 55 degree thread angle is used. Acme thread wherein uh, the angle is 29 degree uh, they are uh, 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 classified as square thread uh, which are generally used in uh, power uh, screws. Buttress thread, worm thread like this depending upon the form they are uh, classified and uh, depending upon uh, whether they are uh, full circle or semi circular uh, uh, threads. So, semi circular uh, threads are being used in uh, circulating uh, type of bolts and uh, screws. Now, according to the standard whether they are uh, BSW British standard width per threads or uh, uh, metric uh, threads according to the number of start whether it is single start or uh, double start or like this multi start uh, screw threads. Now, according to the spacing of uh, threads I can say T p i threads number of threads per inch where, whether it is uh, 6 T p i 12 T p i like that we can classify and uh, depending upon the pitch also we can uh, classify. So, pitch is uh, pitch or lead it is the distance between two successive threads or length of travel of uh, nut for one rotation of uh, screw. So, pitch can be 1 millimeter pitch or 2 millimeter pitch or 3 millimeter like that. Now, according to the compactness or fineness of uh, threads, we can classify them as general uh, threads and uh, pipe threads and very fine uh, threads which are used for uh, leak proof uh, applications. And according to the segmentation whether they are uh, full form uh, threads or uh, off turn uh, threads example is off nut uh, used in lathe and then sector threads which are used in uh, jaws of uh, lathe uh, checks. Now, how these uh, threads are made? There are many uh, methods, uh, very common method is uh, thread machining. Uh, they can be turned, uh, they can be milled and thread grinding, thread uh, tapping. So, these are some thread machining uh, uh, methods and the threads can also be made by uh, thread uh, rolling uh, operation. Now, let us move uh, to the screw thread uh, terminologies. Uh, various uh, terms are uh, used in uh, 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 with respect to screw threads, internal screw threads as well as external uh, screw threads. Now, this uh, picture shows uh, some of the uh, terminologies. 
you can see the profile of uh, the screw thread and uh, the distance between one point on uh, the screw thread to the corresponding point on the next uh, thread. This is uh, known as uh, pitch and then this uh, peak uh, portion of the thread is called uh, crest and in the bottom most that is uh, the lowest uh, uh, point on the screw thread profile is uh, known as uh, root and then we have this uh, sloping uh, surface which uh, connects uh, crest uh, with the root is called uh, the flank and then the angle between uh, the perpendicular line uh, perpendicular to the axis and the flank is called uh, flank angle and uh, double the flank angle is uh, known as uh, thread uh, angle. Now, uh, uh, this is the pitch uh, line. So, this pitch line it bisects uh, the uh, thread in uh, such a way that uh, the thread material space is equal to the air uh, space. So, this uh, line is called uh, pitch line and uh, this uh, diameter is known as uh, pitch diameter and uh, addendum. So, the distance between the pitch line and uh, the crest point is known as uh, addendum and similarly, the distance between the root and uh, the pitch line is called uh, didendum. Now, pitch uh, it is the distance uh, from a point on a screw thread to a corresponding point on the next uh, thread measured parallel to the axis. So, this is uh, very important when we measure the pitch measurement should be made parallel to the axis. Now, you can see here this is a single start uh, uh, screw thread. So, uh, wherein uh, a lead is equal to pitch. Now, what is uh, lead? It is the distance a screw thread advances in uh, 1 turn. When we rotate the screw thread by 1 turn, what is the distance uh, moved, axial movement of the uh, thread uh, that is called uh, lead. For a single uh, start, lead is equal to pitch. Whereas, in the case of two start uh, uh, screw thread, uh, lead is equal to twice uh, the pitch. Now, uh, thread form is uh, the cross section of the thread cut by a plane containing the axis. For example, in the case of uh, metric thread, uh, we will be having a V profile uh, like this. So, this is the thread uh, form or thread profile. In case of metric uh, thread, this uh, included angle which is known as uh, thread angle is uh, equal to 60 degrees. And in the case of uh, Whitworth uh, thread, the included angle is uh, 55 uh, degrees. And how these uh, screw threads are designated? Uh, the metric threads, they are designated uh, in this fashion. Uh, one example is uh, shown here, M 10 times 1. So, M uh, indicates that uh, the thread is metric type and 10 indicates a 10 mm major uh, diameter and this 1 indicates a pitch of uh, 1 millimeter. Now, various uh, thread uh, forms are used in the practice. This is a sharp uh, V, wherein uh, we have a uh, sharp uh, crest uh, here. So, it is uh, slightly modified, it is uh, made rounded or flat, then it is called unified uh, thread and then uh, in, the, in these two cases uh, sharp V and unified the included angle is uh, 60 degree, whereas in the case of Whitworth uh, thread the included angle is uh, 55 uh, degree. And then uh, modified uh, square uh, 10 degree included angle, these are modified square uh, threads used in uh, power screws and Acme threads wherein the included angle is 29 degree. So, similarly, we have modified buttress and then knuckle threads. So, like this uh, different uh, thread forms are available. Now, what is the major uh, diameter? We can uh, understand uh, from this uh, diagram.
the it is the major diameter is the diameter of an imaginary cylinder coaxial with the screw which just touches the crest of an external thread. You can see here uh, we have the crest points here and we have the crest uh, here. So, the uh, imaginary cylinder will pass over these uh, crest uh, points uh, just touches the crest of uh, an external thread or roots of an internal uh, thread. It is also known as uh, nominal uh, diameter. In case of internal uh, thread you can see uh, these are the roots and uh, this is the root. Now, the distance uh, between uh, root, root here and root at this place. So, this distance is uh, minor uh, diameter and distance between the crest to crest. So, this is uh, a major uh, diameter. So, minor diameter is the diameter of uh, an imaginary cylinder coaxial with the screw which just touches uh, the roots of an external uh, thread or crest of an internal uh, thread. So, this is also known as uh, root diameter or uh, core uh, diameter. Now, uh, let us uh, understand what is the meaning of effective diameter or uh, pitch uh, diameter. It is the diameter of uh, an imaginary cylinder coaxial with the axis of the thread and intersects the flanks of the thread such that width of threads and width of spaces between the threads are equal. So, this is the line which is passing through the thread uh, profile and it cuts the flank such that the width of thread is equal to width of uh, space. So, if we pass the line in such a manner then that is called uh, pitch uh, line and uh, the from pitch line to the other pitch line on the other side. So, this diameter is uh, pitch uh, diameter and flank is uh, the thread surface that connects uh, crest with uh, root. So, the uh, crest is connected with uh, the root this sloping surface is known as uh, flank and then the depth of thread it is the distance between crest and uh, root measured perpendicular to the axis of uh, screw. So, the axis of screw will be somewhere here and uh, we have to pass a line perpendicular to the axis and uh, the distance between the root and uh, the crest. So, this is uh, the depth of uh, thread. So, this is depth of thread. Now, angle of uh, thread. So, angle it is the angle between sides of thread that means angle between two flanks measured in axial uh, plane. You can uh, see here we have a plank, uh, flank here, we have another uh, flank here. So, the included angle between two flanks is known as uh, thread uh, angle and helix angle is uh, uh, angle that the thread makes when uh, with plane perpendicular to the thread axis. So, this is the thread axis. So, we have the thread axis here and then uh, this is the ridge or the thread ok. It makes an angle with this perpendicular. So, this angle is known as a helix uh, angle and flank angle is uh, of the included angle of the thread. And then we discussed about uh, the addendum and uh, dedendum. Then uh, sometimes we say right handed uh, thread. So, when the screw thread advances when uh, turned uh, clockwise, 
it is called a right handed thread and when it advances when turned in the counter clockwise direction it is called left handed thread. Now, let us uh, move to the uh, measurement of uh, thread uh, elements. In order to find the accuracy of uh, screw thread uh, reduced, it is uh, necessary to measure the various uh, thread elements. Uh, so, thereby we can say whether the thread produced uh, is as per the specification or not. So, normally these are the uh, elements measured uh, to check whether uh, the screw thread is ok or not. The measurement of uh, measure diameter, measurement of minor diameter and measurement of uh, pitch diameter or uh, effective diameter, pitch measurement, thread angle measurement and thread form is also measured. Now, let us uh, uh, study how uh, the major uh, diameter of a screw thread is uh, measured. Uh, so, this uh, instrument is known as a bench uh, micrometer. Uh, we can see the uh, very rugged uh, cast iron uh, base of uh, the instrument, wherein uh, there is a slide which can be moved uh, parallel to the axis of the bench uh, micrometer. This is a um, slideable uh, body which houses the micrometer head. A large diameter uh, micrometer uh, is uh, fitted and this is the anvil. So, when we rotate this thimble, the anvil uh, uh, moves in or out and then we have a, a table. So, this uh, table also can be moved uh, in this uh, direction to accommodate uh, the work pieces and this uh, table surface is a flat uh, surface which can be moved up and uh, down again to accommodate uh, the work pieces of different uh, sizes. So, left hand side we have uh, uh, the body which houses uh, the anvil. Uh, this anvil also can be moved in and out to accommodate work pieces of uh, different uh, sizes. We can see there is a fiducial uh, indicator. So, when we place the work piece between these two anvil, anvils and we rotate the micrometer head, the anvil will move and then uh, the it will act uh, some pressure on the work piece that is transmitted to this anvil and finally, it is transmitted uh, to the fiducial indicator. And this indicator will indicate what is the pressure or force applied on to the uh, work piece. This is very essential uh, to conduct uh, the experiments, measurement experiments at the same uh, pressure uh, always. Uh, it is uh, very essential that we should not uh, over pressurize the screw threads. So, when the anvils, uh, uh, when they should just uh, touch uh, the crust, if you over uh, pressurize the a screw thread what happens is anvils uh, will try to crush the uh, crest and uh, the screw thread uh, gets uh, deformed and we do not get uh, the proper uh, reading. So, to apply even uh, pressure for all the work pieces this uh, fiducial uh, indicator is uh, provided. And on this uh, table surface we can, we can uh, put some uh, fixtures to hold uh, the work pieces. Now, this uh, shows a schematic diagram of uh, bench micrometer. This is uh, the micrometer head with the scale on the thimble and with the scale on uh, the barrel. And then uh, we have uh, the measuring uh, anvils and clamps for uh, measuring anvils, fiducial indicator. The anvil and fiducial indicator, uh, it is uh, slideable so that we can accommodate uh, the work pieces of different sizes. We can also see there is a fixture, holding centers are there to hold uh, the uh, screw threads. Now, it is very essential that the axis of these holding centers should be perpendicular to the axis of the bench uh, micrometer.
Now, in order to use uh, this bench uh, micrometer to measure uh, the major uh, diameter, normally uh, 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 the bench micrometer it is used as a, a comparator. That means, a standard uh, uh, cylinder normally a plain uh, plug gauge having uh, approximately same diameter as uh, the major, major diameter of the thread uh, to be measured is used as uh, a standard cylinder for setting the micrometer and over the standard uh, cylinder micrometer uh, reading is taken and it is recorded as uh, R 1. So, we use uh, uh, the standard uh, cylinder to establish uh, com uh, 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 for uh, a comparative uh, measurement in order to reduce uh, the uh, possible uh, errors. And uh, then after taking uh, reading uh, R 1, we have to remove the standard uh, cylinder from the uh, bench micrometer and we have to insert uh, the thread to be inspected between the centers and again uh, the micrometer uh, reading uh, R 2 is uh, noted uh, down. So, using this uh, bench micrometer, it is possible to measure uh, the major diameter to an accuracy of uh, plus or minus 0 0.001 uh, millimeter. Such a fine uh, accurate uh, measurement is possible with uh, the bench uh, micrometers. Now, we can uh, see here S is uh, the diameter of uh, the standard uh, cylinder normally plain plug gauges are used as standard cylinders and R 1 is the reading on the uh, standard uh, cylinder and uh, R 2 is reading on the thread to be inspected and then D the major diameter of thread can be calculated using this uh, relationship S yes, plus or minus R 1 minus R 2. Whether we use uh, plus or minus it depends on whether the standard uh, uh, cylinder diameter is uh, uh, greater than uh, major diameter of thread or smaller than uh, major diameter of thread. We can see here uh, the measurement process. Initially, uh, we have to take uh, the measurement using uh, standard cylinder and the reading uh, that is obtained is R 1 and then we have to remove the standard cylinder, place the uh, thread to be inspected and then again you take the reading. So, this reading will be R 2. And then we can uh, conveniently use uh, an outside uh, micrometer also for measurement of uh, major diameter. So, the care should be taken uh, to see that uh, uh, the crests of the thread are not uh, over uh, pressurized. So, when we uh, move the anvil, uh, we should uh, take care that uh, as soon as the anvil just touches the crest of uh, thread, we should stop uh, the rotation of uh, thimble. So, again procedure is uh, same reading is taken with the standard uh, cylinder uh, that is uh, R 1 we get and then uh, standard uh, cylinder is removed and uh, screw thread uh, is placed uh, between anvils and reading R 2 is taken. And again using this relationship, we can calculate the major diameter of the thread. Now, uh, uh, we will have a numerical uh, problem. Uh, while uh, measuring the major diameter of uh, an external uh, thread, a 35.5 millimeter diameter uh, plain plug gauge is used as a uh, standard. The micrometer uh, readings over the plug gauge and uh, screw thread are 9.376 millimeter and 11.876 millimeter respectively. Now, we have to find uh, uh, the thread uh, major uh, diameter. Now, the data that is given is R 1 is uh, 9.376 millimeter. This is the micrometer reading uh, on uh, the standard cylinder and then we have R 2 is equal to 11.876 millimeter. This is the re micrometer reading on uh, the uh, thread gauge screw thread and then 
uh, yes that is uh, standard cylinder diameter is 35.5 uh, millimeter. Now uh, in the measurement uh, process of this type normally smaller diameter standard is used that is uh, diameter of standard is smaller than the major diameter of screw. So, in that case we use this uh, relationship d is equal to s plus r 2 minus uh, r 1. So, the s uh, value is 35.5 and uh, r 2 value is 11.876 millimeter and r 1 value is 9.376 millimeter. So, the calculation will give us uh, the major diameter of uh, the screw thread as 38 millimeter. Now, we will uh, move to measurement of uh, minor uh, diameter. The minor diameter is measured again by a comparative uh, process that means, we use a standard cylinder and we take the measurement and then we put the uh, screw thread to be inspected again we take the reading and then by using uh, the relationship we calculate uh, the minor uh, diameter and floating carriage uh, diameter measuring uh, machines uh, can be conveniently used for measurement, me measurement of uh, minor uh, diameter. The details about uh, this floating carriage machine we will uh, discuss uh, after uh, some time. So, use of uh, prisms is uh, made while uh, measuring uh, the minor uh, diameter. These uh, prisms they look like uh, small uh, V pieces and they make contact with the uh, root of uh, the thread. The prisms are uh, made of uh, hardened uh, steel and are uh, made in uh, several sizes having suitable radii at uh, the tips. Now, you can see here uh, these are the prisms. So, this is uh, the prism being used on uh, screw thread as well as on the setting uh, cylinder. The prisms will uh, look uh, like this. So, the, the isometric view of uh, the prism uh, I have written here. So, this uh, the sloping uh, surface of uh, the prism will not uh, make any contact with the flank of thread as we can uh, see here. So, this uh, portion I am uh, enlarging. So, this is the V prism and then we have a small uh, radii here at the tip and then we have uh, the screw thread uh, profile. So, the sloping surface of the prism will not make any contact with the flank of the screw thread. It, the contact will be there only at the root. Now, using these uh, uh, prisms we can conveniently measure the minor diameter of uh, external uh, screw threads. There is an arrangement in the floating carriage uh, uh, machine. There is an arrangement to place uh, these uh, prisms hooks are provided using hooks we can suspend uh, these prisms and we can conveniently measure uh, the minor diameter. Now, the procedure is similar to the measurement of uh, major diameter reading uh, R 1 is taken with the standard uh, cylinder placed uh, between two prisms and then uh, standard cylinder is uh, removed and threaded uh, work piece which is to be inspected is uh, mounted between the centers of the instrument 
and then reading micrometer uh, reading uh, R2 is uh, noted down and then using this uh, relationship we can find the uh, minor uh, diameter of uh, the thread. Again uh, whether we use plus or minus symbol depends upon the size of uh, the standard uh, cylinder whether it is a, the diameter is greater than the minor diameter or uh, diameter is smaller than the minor diameter. Now, using this relationship we can find out uh, the minor diameter of uh, screw thread. Now, we will have a numerical uh, problem here. While measuring the minor diameter of uh, an external thread, a 30.5 millimeter diameter plain plug gauge is used as a standard. The micrometer uh, readings over the plug gauge and thread are uh, 15.376 millimeter and 13.521 millimeter respectively. We are required to calculate uh, the minor uh, diameter that is small d. Now, the data that is uh, given is R 1 is equal to 15.376 millimeter and R 2 is uh, 13.521 millimeter and uh, diameter of the standard is uh, 30.5 uh, millimeter. So, in this case uh, a larger uh, diameter standard is uh, used and uh, minor diameter is equal to d minus. Since the diameter uh, of standard is larger we are using this negative uh, sign d minus r 1 minus r 2 is equal to uh, we have to feed uh, these uh, values and finally, we get the minor diameter that is 28.645 millimeter. Now, uh, we will move on to the measurement of uh, internal uh, threads. Uh, let us understand how uh, to measure the major diameter of uh, internal thread and uh, minor uh, diameter of uh, internal uh, thread. The minor uh, diameter can be measured by using uh, taper uh, parallels and also by using uh, rollers. Now, measurement of major diameter of uh, internal uh, thread. So, for this uh, we use a method uh, called uh, casting uh, method. You can see in this diagram this is the uh, work piece having uh, internal uh, threads whose uh, major diameter uh, is to be measured. Now, uh, we have to take a replica of uh, this uh, internal uh, thread. So, how do we get the replica of internal thread? You can see the arrangement. This is the work piece with the internal thread on both sides of uh, this uh, work piece like this. Uh, we have to keep uh, wooden uh, blocks and then we have to pour either uh, plaster of Paris or uh, dental uh, wax or sulfur also can be used. We have to put uh, the uh, pl plaster of Paris mixed with uh, water or dental wax into this uh, cavity and we should uh, allow it to, uh, to settle. And then once it uh, dries, uh, we have to remove the wooden uh, blocks and then we have to uh, remove the solidified uh, uh, plaster of Paris uh, piece without uh, uh, rotating uh, uh, the plaster of Paris, we have to just lift it. We should take care that uh, while pouring the plaster of Paris, it is uh, uh, the so if this is the uh, center of uh, the work piece, you can see the level of this is the level of uh, plaster of Paris, it is not crossing the center of uh, uh, or it is not crossing the radius of uh, the work piece. Such uh, care uh, should be taken, so that we can uh, easily remove the solidified uh, plaster of Paris. Now, uh, uh, the this uh, casting will have uh, the uh, thread uh, profile and then uh, the, we using uh, the bench uh, micrometer, 
we can uh, measure uh, the major uh, diameter of uh, internal thread. So, again uh, uh, in the cast uh, that is uh, obtained, we should uh, measure uh, R 1 and R 2 and then we should uh, use uh, uh, this uh, equation to find out uh, the major uh, diameter. Now, how do we find uh, the minor diameter of uh, internal uh, thread? For that uh, two methods are uh, suggested. So, first method is using uh, taper uh, parallels. Now, this is uh, used when uh, uh, the diameter is uh, less than uh, 20 millimeter. So, taper parallels and uh, micrometer uh, are used for measurement of internal uh, thread. So, these uh, taper parallels are uh, pairs of wedges having rounded and parallel outer edges. So, when we look uh, from this side, uh, the parallels will look like this. So, they have a rounded edge. So, this uh, curved surface will uh, come in contact with the screw thread, so like this. Again another uh, wedge is used, two a pair of wedges are used, so again this is the rounded edge and this is uh, the screw thread. Now the distance between the outer edges of the parallels uh, can be changed by moving them uh, in this fashion. So, using this uh, arrangement internal diameter of uh, the uh, screw threads of different uh, sizes uh, can be measured. Now, using the micrometer the distance uh, between uh, the outer edge rounded edge is uh, measured. So, that gives the minor uh, diameter of uh, internal thread. Now, using uh, rollers or uh, balls, uh, we can uh, measure the internal thread, a minor diameter of uh, internal thread. So, this is used uh, uh, when uh, the screw thread the diameter is uh, more than uh, 20 millimeter. So, precision uh, rollers or uh, balls are inserted inside, inside the thread as shown in this uh, schematic diagram and uh, slip gauges are inserted between the rollers or balls. So, these are uh, the rollers or balls of same diameter, they are in contact with uh, the internal thread and the gap between the rollers or balls is filled with uh, slip gauge. And then the minor diameter is uh, uh, calculated by adding uh, the diameter of uh, these two uh, rollers plus the slip gauge uh, width. Now, let us uh, conduct uh, an experiment uh, to show the measurement of uh, minor diameter of uh, internal thread. Yeah. You can see a component uh, having internal uh, threads, you can see these are the internal uh, threads. Now, we are uh, required to measure the minor diameter of uh, the internal thread. So, for this uh, I am using uh, two steel balls and slip gauge box. So, initially we should uh, measure the approximate uh, minor uh, diameter using a vernier, vernier caliper. So, the approximate minor uh, 
diameter as measured using a vernier caliper is 55, 56, 57, 58, 58 millimeter and then we have to add uh, the vernier uh, scale uh, reading. So, it is uh, 20th reading, 20th line is coinciding with the main scale uh, mark. So, the vernier uh, reading is 20 into 0 0.02. Now, we have to keep uh, the two steel balls inside, we have to measure what is the diameter of uh, steel ball. We can see uh, steel ball diameter is uh, 12 millimeter and then we have to note down uh, the vernier reading. The second steel ball uh, diameter also should be measured to ensure that uh, both are having same diameter. Again you can see the major uh, the diameter is 12 millimeter and then we have to note down uh, the vernier uh, reading. Now, uh, we should uh, measure the approximate distance between the two steel balls, so that we can easily build uh, the slip gauge uh, assembly. You can see the approximate distance between steel balls is 33 millimeter. And then we should uh, see the coinciding uh, division. Now, I am building uh, the slip gauge assembly. and slip cage uh, should be filled between uh, the steel balls. I am taking uh, 20 millimeter slip gauge, 9 millimeter slip gauge. And then 1.006 millimeter slip gauge. Two millimeter slip gauge. I am ringing, and then one point two three millimeter uh, slip gauge, and finally one point uh, zero zero six millimeter slip gauge. Now the assembly. I am trying to insert between uh, the two steel balls. So it is not entering the gap. So, the width of assembly is greater than uh, the gap between uh, steel balls. So, we have to again reduce the width. Now, uh, I am taking uh, 1.001 millimeter uh, slip gauge, I removed 1.006 uh, millimeter uh, slip gauge 
Now, you can see it is entering the assembly is uh, entering in, in the gap between uh, two steel balls. So, now this uh, is the width of uh, the slip gauge assembly that is 33.231 millimeter the total width is 33.231 millimeter and then we have to add diameter of this uh, steel ball and diameter of this uh, steel ball to get uh, the minor diameter of internal thread. Now, uh, in the experiment uh, we observed uh, that uh, ball diameter is uh, 12.56 millimeter and gap between balls is uh, 33.231 millimeter. So, the minor uh, diameter is 2 times uh, the ball diameter plus the gap between uh, balls. So, finally, we get uh, 58.351 millimeter. So, this is the minor diameter of uh, internal uh, thread. Let us uh, summarize uh, this uh, lecture. In this uh, lecture, we discussed uh, about uh, the different methods of making uh, the screw thread and uh, how they are classified and uh, what are the various uh, types of uh, screw threads uh, normally used. We also discussed about uh, screw thread uh, terminology and then we uh, studied about uh, the measurement of uh, major diameter and minor diameter of uh, external screw thread and internal uh, screw thread. With this, uh, we will conclude this uh, session. Thank you. Yeah.